Hey crafters, if you're new to Cricut, then you might be feeling a bit overwhelmed and stressed out trying to figure out Cricut design space. I know I felt exactly like that when I first started, but I have been a user now for many years. So in this video, I want to share with you the key things you need to know to get started in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to demonstrate on my laptop, so the desktop version of the app, but if you want me to show you how to use it on the iPad or on your phone, then leave me a comment below and I can do a whole video just about that. Once you have downloaded the app and created your login details, the first thing you see is the homepage. I'm actually going to tell you guys to ignore the homepage completely. Nothing here is that vital for you to get to know if you're a brand new beginner. Instead, I want you to toggle to the canvas at the top. And that's because the canvas is where you do all of your actual designing for whatever it is you're trying to make. So it's much more valuable for you to get to know how to use the canvas than it is to figure out the homepage. The first step anytime you're crafting will always be to come to the top right of the canvas and select the machine that you're working on. If you are lucky enough to own more than one machine, then you have to make sure you've selected the correct one because for example, if I change this to Cricut Joy, then the app will sort of update and filter itself to only show me things that are compatible with the Cricut Joy. And that will not be the same as the stuff, for example, on the Cricut Maker, because the Maker is a bigger machine, it can do bigger projects, and it takes more accessories than the Cricut Joy does. Let's take a look at the canvas itself. On the left hand side you've got this menu here and I'm going to start here. You'll notice that there is another menu on the top but right now you can't actually do anything. Nothing can be clicked on this menu and that's because we have a blank canvas. Now just before I do start explaining to you the menu on the left hand side, I want to point out that although Cricut Design Space is software that is free to download, quite a lot of the features and kind of images and projects you're going to find in there are something you have to pay for. Now you can do this by taking the monthly subscription, which is known as Cricut Access. It costs around £7.50 per month. Alternatively, you can pay for images individually. The difference between those two options is that when you pay monthly, you can use whichever images that are included in Cricut Access as much as you want whilst you're a subscriber. But if you make a project using something that is in the Cricut Access library and then you decide to cancel your subscription, you wouldn't be able to use those images anymore. However, if you decided not to be a monthly subscriber, but you found certain images that you really like and you just pay for them as a one-off, those will always be in your library and your ability to use them will never be taken away. My suggestion to Cricut beginners is always just get started with your machine, get used to using it, kind of get over that initial fear of figuring things out before you decide to sign up to Cricut Access. You do get a month's free trial anyway, so once you feel more confident, you can do the free trial and decide if you want to actually pay monthly, if it's worth it for you or not. Just to show you in Design Space, for example, if I click into Project, anywhere that you see this symbol in the top of whether it's an image, a shape, a project, a font, this means it's only available to Cricut Access subscribers. If you're not currently a subscriber and you don't want to pay for it, then I would steer away from the ones that have that symbol. As a beginner, even on this left-hand menu, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I want you just to ignore. I'm going to explain to you what the new button means. Projects, shapes, images, and text. The rest of it, we just don't need to know about right now because we're just getting started and that stuff is kind of level two design space information. You don't need to know it right now. Don't stress about it. Let's start with the button at the top that says new. That's very simple. It will just open up a new project for you. Let's skip templates and move straight onto projects. Projects I do think are very good for beginners to start to understand. When you click on projects, you will get this pop-up appear showing you all of the ready to make projects in Design Space. If you have something in mind that you're creating, you can just search for it up in the top search bar. For example, maybe we're making a cake topper. So you type in your search term and it will filter all of the projects for cake toppers. If you find something you like the look of, for example, this hooray cake topper, you can select it and what you get is some images of the actual project. And when you flick between the images, you will also see what you will get on the canvas if you decide to make this project. On the right hand side are a list of instructions, including the materials you need and the various Cricut supplies. So if you're happy with the project, you can click on customize, which will take it onto your canvas. Once it's on your canvas, if you want to change anything, like maybe you want to resize it, you can do that here. Resizing is really easy. You just select the image that you want to change and then click and drag from one of the corners like this. Another thing you've hopefully noticed is that when I do click on one of the images, this menu at the top that was not doing anything for us earlier has now come to life. First off, we have operation. 
This is where you tell the machine what it is you're planning on doing. So if you're planning on cutting the image, let's say out of vinyl or cardstock, then you would select a basic cut. If, however, you wanted to draw this or use your foiling tool, or any of the other accessories, then you just select the correct one in this drop-down menu. In this part of the menu, you can also change the color. The other parts of the edit menu that I want you guys to know about as beginners are flip. So this, if you see, it will do like a mirror image, either on the horizontal, and if we undo that, you can also do it on the vertical. I'm not going to cover offset and create sticker or warp. Again, these are all kind of level two design space things that I don't think beginners need to know about. I do want you to see that there is the option here of resizing your image. So I showed you earlier that you can click and drag. If, however, you're making something to a very specific size, you can type it into the box here. Let's say this has to be exactly 18 centimeters. And you'll notice it resized the height automatically because this lock icon is on, which means the aspect ratio, the horizontal to the vertical is locked. If you want to set the height and the width, again, specifically to your size that you need, you can click on unlock. And let's say we want this to be 18 by five, for example, then we can do that precisely. I don't suggest you do this with text because it kind of looks a bit weird, but sometimes you do need to do this when you're working with images. And the other part of this menu I want you to know about is rotate. Rotate is another function we can do on the canvas by floating just past the corner of this bounding box. You'll see the arrow goes from straight to curved. And now when you click and drag, you can rotate. And again, if you need a precise number, you can type that into the rotate box like this. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to projects. I'm going to now clear my canvas by clicking and dragging over both of these images and I'm pressing the backspace on my keyboard. Now we have an empty canvas again. So let's move on to shapes. When you click on this menu, you will see a library of shapes that you can use in your project. The ones at the top are the ones that are all free. So as beginners, just focus there. You can also scroll down a bit to find more um, options for shapes. I find myself using these when, for example, I'm designing a gift tag or a frame of some sort and I just need like a basic circle or a square to create that background shape. So you just click on the shape that you like the look of and it will put it onto your canvas. And other basic keyboard shortcuts that you would expect to also apply. For example, I can do Control C, Control V to copy and paste the image. So that's what you need to know about shapes. Let's move on to images. The image library, as you can see, is over a million different images. So there's a lot going on in here. So let's make use of the filters on the left-hand side to narrow down what we're seeing. First, going to select free. None of these images are anything that we'd need to pay for or be access subscribers for. And then you can simply search for whatever it is you might be making, a flower, for example. And then you get the options of flower themed images that are free to use. As you've seen, the library is humongous. So a top tip for you is anytime you do find an image you like, click on this little icon at the bottom, which will bookmark it, which means that you can easily find it again. If I take off this free filter and let's clear the search as well. So we're back to having a million images. But if I now click on bookmarked, that image that we just looked at is right there waiting for me. To add something to your canvas, you simply click on it and you will see it appear at the bottom. If you decide you don't want that image anymore, if you float over it at the bottom menu, then you can see the X, click on that and it takes it away. But let's add this image and this one and click add to canvas. I want to demonstrate one more part of the edit menu that we haven't looked at yet. How I'll do this is I will grab a shape. Let's take this circle and let's change the color. It's kind of yellow and I'll get this flower and I'll make it pink, let's make the circle bigger. And let's say I want to create a gift tag and this, this circle is going to be the base and I need this flower to be on top. But as I'm designing, you can see that my circle is covering up the flower, I can't see how this is going to look. What we need to do is move this circle behind the flower. But how do we do that? It's in the edit menu at the top, click on arrange and you can press send to back. You can see now that circle's been moved behind the flower. Let's move on to text in this menu on the left-hand side. So you click on text, it drops a little text box onto your canvas. You can simply double-click in it and start typing. I'll send this gift to myself, why not? And then click and drag to put it into position. Again, I can drag from the corners to make it smaller. What I'm trying to do is place the flower exactly along the middle of the circle and then the text to be aligned underneath it. And there is a tool we can use to help us do that because it's kind of difficult to eyeball it, right? So to make it obvious, I'll move the flower and the text to be quite obviously not in line. 
And now I will click and drag over everything. And if you see there's this option up here, align, and there are various different options, I'm gonna click on center horizontally. And now you see it's all very nicely down the middle of this circle. Let's go back to the text and make it look a little bit prettier. The first thing is that I'm not planning on cutting the text out of cardboard or anything. I want to actually use the pen function on my machine and write it onto the gift tag. The first thing I would then need to do is to come to operation, if you remember from before, and we can select pen. So now we can see that it's going to be using a pen and it will be writing the words to Bravia. The next change we might want to make is to make it look a bit nicer. This is kind of a font that's not so wonderful and also it's kind of doing outlines of letters rather than just individual strokes for letters. But when you click on text, you'll see a new menu pops up at the top. If you click into fonts, let's first filter for free fonts. Again, we don't want to be having to buy anything at this stage in our Cricut journey. And then the other filter you want to put on if you are using a pen and you want this to look like handwriting is this writing filter. For example, if we select this Cricut alphabet font, you can see that now instead of having outlines of letters, we've got the individual strokes. So it just looks like I have really beautiful, neat handwriting. I want to show you one more feature on the canvas that I think is handy for beginners to know. You already know how to align the flower and this text to be down the middle of the circle. But now let's say I'm happy with the way the flower and the text look and I can select both by clicking on the flower, holding shift and then clicking on the text. What if I want this to be exactly in the middle of the circle? If I were to highlight all three of these parts of our design, go to align and align center, which means that it will be aligned down the middle and along the top. We can see that hasn't actually worked. We've done something wrong. So let's go back to kind of roughly keeping the flower and the text where we wanted it. And we can start by aligning and centering horizontally. And if you are happy with how far above this flower is from the text, select both, hold the flower, shift, select the text. Now what we need to do is to group these two images together. So you can either right click and click on group, or you can click on this icon over on the right hand side and you can also use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control G. We've turned these into a group and we know that because now if I click on the flower and move it around, the text comes with me. If I click on the text and move it around, the flower comes with me. So that means these are kind of seen as sort of one image at the moment. If I now click and highlight over both the circle and this grouped flower and text and align center, you will see this time when we do that, it hasn't put the text on top of the flower. Instead, it has just made sure that this whole image is precisely centered on that circle. Okay, crafters, those are the key things that I think you need to get to know when you first get started in Cricut Design Space. There are so many more tools and functions that we can talk through, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys. If you are looking for more tips on how to use Design Space, then I have a whole playlist called Cricut Essentials, where I go down into the details of the different functions that Cricut Design Space offers. So please go and check that out. Otherwise, let me know in the comments if you found this helpful or what you want to learn about next. I will see you next time. Until then, happy crafting.